If you're frustrated with ChatGPT not being able to give you accurate research articles, today's tool is going to be exactly what you need. This is Assistant by Site.ai, and I will leave a link below to how you can access this. What they have done with this assistant tool is essentially taken ChatGPT and added in a validation for research articles. So you can ask it for sources and it will actually give you real research articles that you can then click and link into instead of having to go try and find them with ChatGPT or realizing that they don't even exist with ChatGPT. Now, before I get started, this is a paid tool. So you can get two free prompts and then you can get a free trial. Everything that I'm doing, you can do within their seven day free trial. And then it is a paid tool. It is about the same cost as ChatGPT's paid version if you're interested. And according to their site, they do have some student discounts if you reach out to them. But I wanna show you some of the capabilities of this tool if you're interested and you think it can make your research process more efficient. So one of my favorite parts of this tool is probably the ability for it to find a source for the following sentence. So if you're working with this, say you're writing a paper and as a researcher, you just know a lot of stuff and you might not know the best sources to be able to find for it. So I'm going to ask it to find a source for a sentence that I know very well. So I've asked it, find the best four sources to cite for the following sentence. And the sentence is steroid analysis is important in medical diagnoses. And now you can see over here, it's gonna kind of spin. This does take a little bit longer to respond than something like ChatGPT, but it is going to give you more valuable information than something like ChatGPT when it comes to research. So here you can see it says the best four sources to cite for the sentence, and it resays my sentence are estimation of steroid hormones and biological samples, GCMS remains a preeminent discovery tool in clinical steroid investigations, steroid metabolome analysis in disorders of adrenal steroid biosynthesis, and diagnostic value of urinary steroid profiling. And it even links them here as well. And you can see that it shows the references over here as well. So you can see the references here, you can show or hide the abstract, and then you can go to view full text. So if I open that up, you can see that this is a review article here. It does actually have a citation here. It does exist and you can actually start reading it here as well. And then if we scroll down, you can see all of your references are gonna appear in your right hand panel. And so you can scroll down and you can literally just open these up and you're going to go into Cites tool if you just open them up from their name. And so this is Cites tool that allows you to have cited by and references. If you sign up to be able to use the Site Assistant, you also get access to all of their other tools as well. And so you can easily be able to identify the references and wh what it's been cited by. And then you always have the full text link up here and the DOI to be able to go to the full text if you go to Cites page for that article instead. Here you can see this is a research article that actually exists. And we can see that most of these are actually really good. They're talking about medical disorders and the use of steroid analysis. Some of them are more on the analytical side, so GCMS and microextraction and advanced chromatography, and others, these two are a lot more on the diagnostic side, where each of these focus on a specific type of adrenal disorder. So I went a little bit more specific here. So I said fast and efficient steroid analysis is important for diagnosing reproductive disorders. So now I'm giving it a very specific type of disorder I'm looking for. And I kind of gave it some adjectives here of the type of steroid analysis that I'm looking for. So here you can see it's saying the best four sources to cite and it's saying thyroid stimulating hormone receptor and thyroid hormone receptors are involved in human endometrial physiology. So if I click on this one, you can see this is showing up over here. And again, we can go to view full text to show you these are actually real articles, unlike ChatGPT. So you can see here is the actual text here. It's in reproductive endocrinology. And so analysis of testosterone in human urine using molecular imprinted. So this is a type of analysis. Is there a role of reproductive steroids in the 
etiology and treatment of affective disorders, and killing for conversation, the need for alternatives to lethal sampling. Okay, this one not really as relevant. I'm kind of curious why it's pulling this one at all. So it looks like they did do some analysis of steroids in this and did show it was associated with reproductive cycles. So you can see that it's actually pulling the section here from why it would be good to cite, which is really nice in that you don't only get the article, but you can actually kind of see what the actual section is it's actually pulling. And you can see in this one, they are actually talking about reproductive endocrine related mood disorders. So there are very specific ones, even if the title's a little confusing, you can see that it is actually pulling in some of that information for you to be able to tell, is this actually worth citing? Now, you can do a lot of other things. So you can always access your chat history by coming in here and clicking new chat. And so once I'm in here, I can do a lot more things. And they even give you three different types of questions that they suggest you asking. So you can ask simple questions and get reliable answers from the full text of millions of research articles get unblocked on whatever you're writing. Um, so if you're working on writing a grant proposal or even a research article and you want to be able to kind of figure out what to write, you can do that. And then you can effectively use information from other articles to support your research tasks. So finding competing evidence for a paragraph or something like that. So I'm going to do one of the ones of ask simple questions and get reliable answers. So I'm going to ask it, how are steroid isomers separated in ion mobility? So you can see its answer is there are several methods for separating steroid isomers and ion mobility. One method involves TWIMS to separate steroid metal addicts and isomers and mixtures. That is my paper there, so I know that one's real. Another involves high resolution DTEMS or drift tube ion mobility and varied drift gas mixtures. So this is probably a paper I know pretty well. Oh no, it's a different paper, okay. Um, on an Orbitrap mass spectrometer. That's interesting. Additionally, the use of metal adduction has been, is this mine? No, this is a different one as well. So if we look at this, I'm gonna go to its full text so we can make sure it actually exists. So here you go, trapped ion mobility, spectrometry, time of flight, mass spectrometers for rapid characterization of estrogen isomers. So these are actually fairly, a little bit more in research. So 2020, this one was like 2018, 2019. This one's 2015. So this is a little bit older and it's photoisomerization action spectroscopy. So not exactly what I was looking for. We see FAMES. This is of a disaccharide though, so it's not steroids. So again, anything that comes from something like AI, you're going to need to confirm. Like you wouldn't want to just copy this paragraph because it's not going to make sense to someone who's like actually a scientist. This sentence shouldn't really be there. This sentence shouldn't really be there. Ozone-induced cleavage by ion mobility mass spectrometry. That was a really common thing, yeah, in 2019. And... Again, this is glycan. So you have two things in here that are actually sugars and not steroids, but they are ion mobility mass spectrometry. And then you have comparability of ster steroid CCSs using three different platforms. So there are some good things in here to kind of get started, but there are also about three that aren't nearly as relevant to the question that I asked. So again, this may be a way for you to get more efficient in your research, but it's definitely not going to replace you as a researcher because you still need to know what these different things are. I'd never recommend copying and pasting into something else, but if you wanted to really quickly find out about information, this could be a good way to do it, especially if you want to cite a source for something specific or or if you want to find competing information or other things like that. There will be a link in the description below if you want to check out Site AI's assistant tool. And if you're interested on in other things that you can do, leave me a comment below about what you're interested in what Site AI can do. And I can make more videos in the future to show you different ways to use Site AI as well. If this video was helpful, please like it and subscribe to this channel to learn more tips on how to become more efficient in your research. And I hope to see you in the next video.